Welcome to the second episode of the Art Studio with Rick Jeffix. That's me. Uh, last uh, week, I, I don't know exactly why, but I started putting EVE spaceships in my vacation photos from uh, Iceland last year. Did the uh, Bexler Navy and a rock. It's turned out really good. I kind of dig it. So uh, today I decided I will do this Erin DeFoss uh, photo, which I just absolutely love. And well, since we've done uh, Caldari and um, Galenti, we'll do more today. So I picked an arbitrator from uh, Project Jeremy, and that's it right there. Just slapped right into the photo. Uh, it took me probably three or four tries to get the angle that I wanted in the camera setting uh, just right. And while we're not super worried about uh, accuracy as far as size goes, uh, I do try to make it look a little big. So... We just took a quick look at the levels on the import. Uh, this is a large 300 DPI uh, image, so we take things a little bit more seriously than we do uh, with uh, 72 DPI images. So what I wanted to do first of all is throw a little bit of a tilt shift blur. Actually, I'm not even going to use it as tilt shift. What I'm going to do is uh, switch this thing down a little bit, scrunch it over, and I'm just going to give the top edge a little bit of a blur. And you'll see here. And I'm going to do some, uh, some additional blurring to it later, but I just want to create a little bit of a distance effect to the top part of the ship. So I'm going to try to get the angle right here. Hold on a second. Uh, Photoshop's not as responsive when I'm recording full screen 4K video as it is when I'm not doing it. So I have to hold steady here. Was, as uh, before, if you saw the first episode of these, I'm going to try to use uh, actual instead of using my normal key commands so that you can see what I'm doing. So that just put a, a nice little blur along the top edge of the ship on an angle, which again, I could have easily have done uh, by hand with the blur tool, but... So now we're going to do the second thing, which is check a little bit here. Uh, I just want to check. I'm going to throw a little bit of a little bit of color onto the ship. It was a little bit blue, and I'll scroll this up and down so you can see what the effect does. This image is very, very warm, so we're going to throw a little bit of a warming filter on top of the ship. We're going to do more of this once we. Uh, once we would combine images later on, but that gives me a little bit more of a, a visual feel for what it's going to be. So now we're going to do the second thing, which is really, really cool when it comes to putting ships into real environments, especially big ones. We're going to give it a little bit of a fall off. And we're going to fake the fall off uh, using the layer masking tool, uh, using a layer mask and using the gradation. Watch what happens. That's a little bit too much. So black is not what we want. So we're going to pick a mid-tone gray. Now we're we're doing this inside the layer mask. You can see on the right there. So there we go. That's a little bit better. That creates a little bit of a fall off into the distance. Let's the background uh, come through the ship now. In this case, we don't have any issues with clouds or any objects. If, uh, for instance, there was a tree back there or birds flying or something like that, that would be an issue. And we wouldn't want to do the same thing with that without removing that object from behind the ship. Because essentially what we're doing is using the blue of the sky to fake fall off. And uh, speaking of faking things, now I'm going to go around the ship with the blur tool. Uh, very, very small. Well, in the background there, it was big, but now I've got to do it small. And essentially what this is, is a very quick, horrible way of introducing anti-aliasing. Um, when you cut and paste from uh, one object into another image, um, the anti-aliasing sometimes isn't taken over. Especially if that image that you've cut and paste was against a different kind of background. 
there's ways to fake that if you were doing, um, say, I was taking a hat and putting it on a Twitter avatar. Um, there's a different way of copying and pasting from the source material. But these ships are coming in to us from Project Jeremy on a white background, and you can't use that technique because you'll grab a white uh, halo, uh, so that doesn't really work. So the best way to do it is to cut it out straight up without any anti-aliasing, copy it over, and then uh, just go around the edges really quick and fake the anti-alias. At least I, I think that's the best way. It only takes a minute. Like anything in Photoshop, I've said this before while, while I'm doing this, that looks pretty good. There are multiple ways of doing the same task. And there are plugins available that will do the same task, but there's nothing that you can't do by hand. Um, and it really doesn't matter how you do something as long as the results are what you're after. Because really all that matters in the end is the results that you get. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as it's done correctly. So we're going to do something else here. That, that piece of the uh, Arby seems to be significantly further away. Uh, from the front piece of the RV. So I think a little extra depth of field here would help a lot. So I'm just going to cut out the far away part. Mm -hmm. Cut it away here. Now there are several ways we could do this. We're going to pop it up to a new level layer. And then I'm going to go over to the layer mask. And I'm going to disappear the underneath part so the part above there we go see the halo that was around it that's the anti-alias if I was going to end up doing this kind of thing I'd go back and I'd clean that anti-alias up and then have to redo it on the layer above but or see we're just playing around with different values these are all terrible so this is not what we're going to do so I'm going to try to fool around with saturation. I thought maybe if I took some uh, the color out of it, it might help, but it's not really doing what I want. These are all different techniques that you could use, but I'm just going to cheat here. Yeah, I mean, that's not, that's not good. It's terrible. When I didn't edit these things out, I'm going to leave them in because it shows you how I do things. These are all terrible choices I'm not going to do. No. That's not working out the way I wanted it, so I'm going to cancel that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back. We're going to remove that underneath part. Just going to go back in my art history here. Go back to that, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep the... Yep. Apply the mask. There we go. And I'm going to go back before I made all these stupid choices. And I'm just going to give it a little... There we go. A little bit of a blur. Yay. And that achieves pretty much exactly what I was after. So that's why we're going to leave it there. Looking pretty good. Looking like a big ship flying over Iceland. And um, again, some of these polygons are not exactly smooth sometimes, so I'm just going to smooth out this edge. I don't like it. It looks it looks bad. It's probably accurate, but yeah. So we're just gonna round that off if I can get if I can remember that there's a hidden Marquee. See how long it takes me to figure that out? Well, there it is. I finally figured out. There was a hidden marquee there. So just smooth that out a little bit. Yeah. These pointy bits don't make sense. I just want to round it off a little bit. That's probably way too much uh, effort for what I'm achieving there. Again, this the doing doing this is not hard. This is compositing a, a, a spaceship onto a image like this is not really all that difficult. It's really 
about making uh, really subtle choices that add a little bit of realism to it. But there is no way to make it perfect. So the idea is to try to color correct it and add some depth of field and add some weight to it and give it a little bit of realism so that the end result is as close as you can possibly get to uh, compositing it. So you can see, boink, what's behind it? I'm going to integrate the clouds a little bit. Here's what we're going to do. So we're going to take a chunk of sky I'm just going to marquee out the sky right along that cloud line. And then I'm going to pop that sky, that chunk of sky up. That's Command J, by the way. It creates a new layer. So that layer is on top of the spaceship. So that's terrible. Let's try soft light. Uh, let's try hard light. Way too much. Kind of cool, though. So we might keep it, actually. So we need to add a layer mask to that. And I'm going to figure out a gradation here. And if you see the RB, it's got a, um, a shadow ridge on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint out the top layer using the layer masking tool and I'm going to try to paint right along that shadow edge so that way the bottom part of the ship is less obscured by clouds than the top part of the ship I'll zoom in here and scroll it down a little bit and we'll try to create we'll try to create there we go so again it's just do this by hand is a lot easier and we'll just create a shadow edge here we go. Right along the shadow line. Ooh, we went too far. So, oops, that's terrible. So we're gonna paint that out. We'll go along the clown there. Let that do that. And I just want to get rid of all this stuff in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. We got a little bit of that in there. We probably want to tone that down a little bit. So I'm going to crank the airbrush down to about 20. And then try to just crank that down just a little bit. It's a little too much. So the front of the ship is more is less than the back of the ship. So the clouds are kind of going along the back side. There we go. So it looks like the clouds are coming right across the middle of the ship, but not the front. Yep. That's looking pretty good. Okay, we'll leave that. So now what? What can we do now to make this look better? Hmm. We'll probably just touch the back of it a little bit. Give it just a little bit more. Is that using the gradation tool is so mechanical. It's one of the other things I like about doing them by hand is sometimes you get random natural looking things. So that looks pretty awesome. And Yeah, when I looked at this, I thought, I wonder where the sun's coming from. So I'm trying to match that, and then... Yeah, the shadow's just not going to be right. Scrunch this down. Well, I left it in here. I was going to edit this part out originally, but I left it in here so you could see how easy it is to do a nice shadow for your spaceship. It's basically select, fill with black on a different layer, drag it down, uh, flip it, scrunch it, 
and then play around with opacities and blurs and whatnots. There's nothing wrong with the shadow. It's just that it doesn't really... There is no shadow in this photo, really. I mean, it is, but it's way over. So the shadow of this arbitrator would probably be up on the cliff where we couldn't see it. So putting it there just doesn't feel right. And we don't need it, so we're just going to get rid of it. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't work. So, delete. Goodbye, Shadow. Now I notice there's a thing down here. So, let's paint that out. I don't like it. And the other two images I used, and you'll see it at the end of this, I drag over a uh, black bar along the bottom. But after I did that, after the video was done, I've decided to do something different with it. So it just turns out to actually not be a waste of time. But I'm just going to paint that out. Now we're painting it out with the stamp tool. Uh, so I'm taking over here to the left, and then I'm painting over. And trying to keep the shadow that's there you can see that there's a circle of dark and I'm going to try to keep that so it looks realistic and I'm just going to make my own over here kind of try to do a little bit of randomness to it that didn't that was too much just paint the sucker out and when you're using the stamp tool, what you, one of the things you have to watch, especially in high-res photos, is a re repetition. And you can see there that there's a little bit of, if you were keen, you could see, oh, that rock looks a lot like that rock. And so what I like to do is introduce a little bit of randomness to it so it's not. So we'll take some samples from different areas. So I had taken the rock from the left there, and then I took a little rock. From above it and now I'm taking some twigs and sticks from over here and I want to get rid of that white spot where the post used to be so I'm going to take that stick and then draw the rest of it there we go so then it doesn't really look like a repetition I just want to blur that edge well, I'll blur it but I turned the opacity of the stamp down to about 40, and I'm painting over the edge, so it, there it goes. So, there you go, you can't really see any repetition unless you were really looking for it, so it looks natural. So that turned out pretty good, that's really beautiful, really, very nice. So what I've done, what I did just there was I created a merge layer, I created a new layer, and then I merged all the visibles while holding down the option key. And that way the originals don't go away. If you do it without holding down the option key, it merges everything into one layer and kills your uh, original. So now we're just opening up le uh, levels to make sure that everything's leveled. Everything color correcting after this, we're going to do to the entire image. So the first thing I like to do with photographs like this is just play around with the exposure and the gammas uh, a little bit and because that's straight out of the camera. There wasn't anything done to that image. So we just want to make it as sharp and as contrasty and as pretty as possible. And it's doing the ship at the same time, which is important. So I want to make sure we're doing everything. That looks pretty nice. Yep. Looking pretty good. And then... Let's go. We need something. So let's go to the good old internet and let's pick up some birds. Mm -hmm. So we're going to type in uh, birds. I used those. I used those on the rock <laughs> from the other image. Oh, these look random. And they're already cut out for us, so we'll just copy them. And then paste them in figure out where they went because they're very tiny and there, there they are somewhere they are very tiny so where did 
did they go? Oh, there they are. All right. So they're black. Well, there they are. I filled it with white. And we'll just put them in the foreground of the ship a little bit. There you go. A little flock of birds flying. It's always kind of it's kind of nice to have something in between the ship and the viewer. Birds are great for this. We use birds a lot. I used birds in a couple of the Titans over the Titan over New York and Stratios over Washington, and I think I used birds in the Rock image. I didn't use them in the in the Vexor image because I didn't think it really needed it. So I just bored them very very little bit because they're a little bit far away. So that's kind of nice. So I don't, it was cool, so I liked it warm. The image is kind of warm, so we're going to play around with some warming filters on the photo filter, which is such a great tool, especially for this. I don't use it on um, on real photos a whole lot because, but on the these, because we're combining two things, it does a really great job of making it all seem like a piece of the same art. And it does the same sort of thing as adding noise, which we're going to do here in a second, is add some noise to it. Yep, see? And uh, we have to be very, very careful with the noise filter. You don't want to put a lot of noise. It just needs a little bit. And what, uh, mostly what that is for, see, that's way too much. You just want a little tiny bit of noise. And what's that? What is for is a couple of things, really. It, um, in a way, it affects and anti-alias is the entire image but it also makes the images brought over from Jeremy uh, feel less rasterized and more natural just a little bit though so there's pretty much our image so now we're going to uh, duplicate the color one and then we're going to make a black and white so we're going to for you that we're going to use the black and white adjustment which is a great tool if you've never used it before because it's a four channel converter. So you can affect each color channel, uh, the reds, yellows, greens, blues, and magentas. Um, and this is an RGB sp uh, space. So, uh, but you can contrast and, and play around with those as well and get really nice effects. So for example, the cyan, that's the sky, uh, cyan and the blues. So I want to crank those down a little bit so that we get some nice contrast going in the sky. That looks pretty awesome. That's a nice Ansel Adams kind of high contrasty black and white image. So I was not real super happy with some of the blacks that we were getting in the shadows down here on the rocks. So I cranked up the contrast just a tiny little bit. You can see me sampling uh, the show info window to see what the values are in the shadows. And they're not bad, they're about 80, 81. So I just cranked them up a couple percentages. So they're more like 83, 84. So that way we have some nice blacks. And there it is. Pretty. So now I'm gonna go uh, to my other image of the Vexor. And why redo something? I can just use it. I'm gonna drag over the two layers from that. And there we go. Yay. And that is how I created, <laughs> created, that's how I created that image. In fifth, well, 10, 15 minutes, probably a real, real effort. Um, I slowed down a little bit and a couple of false starts just for the video. So thanks for joining me again today, everyone. I hope you learned something and enjoyed yourselves and I hope you'll join me next time. Uh, please take care and, um, Subscribe to my YouTube channel and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'd really appreciate it.